Howdy, this is a screencast to show you how to bring uh, SVG files into Onshape. Actually, you can't bring SVG files into Onshape, but we are going to use Inkscape, which we used to make. Uh, I'm going to stop. Hello, this screencast is going to show you how to bring vector images into Onshape so that you can extrude images to make cool stuff like this right here. First thing we're going to do is create a new Onshape document. I'm going to name this vector extrude because that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to extrude a vector image. So in order to make vector images, we need to use Inkscape, which is on the PC laptop. So you're going to have to transfer that file with a flash drive to your uh, Chromebook or you can work on a PC laptop or one of the iMacs. If you click on any plane, you could make a sketch. And on this sketch, we actually want to use this function right here, insert DXF or DWG. They are files that are unique to CAD programs. And Inkscape can make these files. So I'm going to go to Inkscape now. I'm going to minimize my Onshape internet window and as you can see I've got Inkscape open on my desktop I have a image here that I've already converted to vectors I can click on the vector tab and see that this image has been converted to vector format when I click on it the vectors show up so it is ready to import into Onshape but in order to do this I have to create a file of that specific format that Onshape accepts so if we go to File, Save As, as you can see that, well, you would have seen that the default is to save as an Inkscape SVG. But since the last thing I did was click right here and change this default to DW, where is it? right here, DXF or DWG. They're both the same. DXF is a proprietary and unique to AutoCAD and DWG is a generic version that's pretty much the same thing. So we're going to click on .DXF and notice up here that it uses the same file name as I had for my SVG document, but it changes the file name extension to .DXF. So that's exactly what I want. And I'm going to say save. It's going to save in my design. I'm going to change it to save on the desktop so I'll be able to find it more easily. I haven't seen this before so I'm just going to say okay. Now I'm going to go back to Onshape and I'm going to select insert DXF or DWG file. And it's like, you don't have any available. That's because it actually wants me to import it first. There's two ways to import it. I can click right here and import. I can also click right there and import. But I'll click right here because it's there. And I did put it on my desktop and it was called Zelda Crest. So now it's here. I can grab it. And once I grab it, it's like, whoa, it all goes gray. And you know why it all went gray? Because that image is so huge compared to, I am trying to scroll out without a mouse and failing. Okay, so it's huge. My front, this is like a thousand times larger than I want it to be. If I click on dimension and just dimension one of these parts right here, I can see that it's currently 68 inches. I'm going to change that to like, 0.5. It's going to make this whole thing so much smaller, smaller, like 140 times smaller or something like that. Okay, maybe that was too much. So I think I'm going to change it to 1. 1. There we go. Now I can see it. Don't worry. It's still like totally huge relative to my sketch plane. And now I got to bring this dimension back from freaking 30 feet away. Yay! 
So there's my little drawing. And the cool thing about it now is that I can say, yep, that's my sketch. And I can click on extrude and select these faces and make a three-dimensional structure out of it. Although it looks like there's something wrong with the sketch. My vectors right there. Interesting, but it doesn't matter. I'll just select all those parts. And then if I look from the side, I can see it's currently set to extrude one inch. That's fine. Looks good to me. Actually, I think I'm going to change it to 0.75. Oh, much better. Okay. I like that. Um, I could put this, uh, save this and print it on the 3D printer uh, the way it is, but what it would, what you would get is exactly what you see. One, two, three, four, five, six separate parts. Um, and so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to go back to sketch one and I'm going to add, um, a rectangle and that rectangle I am going to put around my design. And now I'm going to say, lovely, where'd my rectangle go? Oh, there it is. I said lovely, and then you disappeared on me. How come when I click on sketch, it's there, and I say great, and then when I get out of sketch, it's not there. No say, Jose, but it's not what I want. I want that face and all of this. Yeah. I'll do that about half an inch. Look at it from the side. And I'm going to say, yeah, that's lovely. And then, yes, okay, the other extrude is still there. So if you look at it from all different angles, you can see that the back is flat and the front has this recessed, uh, this raised uh, Zelda crest, the Hyrulean shield or Hylian shield. I don't know. I'm not that much of a fan of my kids. Um, I could decide to extrude that triangle in the center. I think I will. I think I like that to be. I got double double click extrude one and then here I'm gonna add that face so that add that into extrude one. Oh no, that's not what I wanted to do. So actually if I don't press X, it'll just go away. It's part of extrude two. That's the one that's only going up part of the way. So I'm gonna bring that triangle in. Select extrude two, select face to sketch one and say, add this to the mix. Cool. I like that better. Now that center part is in there. All right, so if I wanted to 3D print this, I would actually have to individually select all of these parts, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, and they would come as separate files, which is not what we want. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm done with this extrude, it looks exactly like I want it, but what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna stick these parts together so that they're one unit and they'll be printed as one. So I'm gonna, it's actually easier over here to take part one, and add it to part eight, which is the last part I added. So here's part eight is this base that I made. Actually, that's not true. That's the triangle in the middle, huh? The base that I made is part seven. So right now I have seven and eight selected. And if I left click on them, I will get a Boolean, which is a function that is also right here, Boolean. It allows you to make parts one unify, subtract parts from each other, which will take one part and use its shape to remove it. Well, actually, let me show you. If I click on subtract, it didn't work. You have to, I had this guy and that guy. If I select those two and I hit subtract and I go check mark, 
it didn't work. It's because I have more than one part in here. So part seven and eight, here's part seven. That's part seven, huh? The Okay, so what I actually want is part six. Eh, I want this thing, the base. Which one is that? Click away, I've got a bunch of stuff selected. Get out of here. This is part seven. Okay, so I want to add part seven to part six. And if I were to subtract them, not working. That's not what I want to do. I want to unify them. So let me just show you what I actually wanted to do, which is that. Notice that they're the same color now, which means they're now one part and it will actually print as one. I'm going to take that part and also add it to, I think it's part six. I don't know. Boolean, but I need to do them kind of separately. And then check that. Lovely. And then part six has all of that stuff and grab part five and add it. Boolean, add them. And as you see, you can see that as you successfully do it, that all the parts that you're adding together become the same color. And they're they're reducing the number of parts over here. Every time I grab part four, which is what I'm kind of working on, and I add another part to it, uh, they become one part. And so my number of parts over here is reducing. Check. Just two more. Let me see if I can do them all at once. All right, cool. All the same color, all the same part. Um, now, if I left click on this, I can export. If you export in the format STL, You can then take that file and print it on the 3D printer. So this guy right here is ready to print and you could do the same with a picture of your own choosing.